What's up YouTube, Jason here, Morphing Solid Reptiles. Welcome back to the channel. This week, because last week got super long-winded even though nobody watched that video. Last week's video, mail time, getting some new stickers for the board and that, uh, was awful. Awfully received. But, whatever. I guess you guys are here for snakes. I mean, Billy can get away with it, but I guess I can't. So, this week, we're gonna go ahead and roll last week's footage of round one of our new holdbacks from the 2020 season. There's some really cool stuff here. Next week is gonna be a departure from that. So we're actually gonna skip a week in this holdback uh, video series, because so there's two parts. So we're gonna do part one now. Next week is gonna be a new upgrade to the room, which I'm hoping I haven't showed you yet. So uh, we're gonna stick with that, that'll be really exciting. Then the week after that, we'll get back to uh, round two of the 2020 holdbacks. So let's get into it. All right, guys, I got uh, eight of them for you here in the first half video. We'll do the second half next week. Cannot start the holdback train without the number one, probably coolest snake we've produced so far, Helen. So, after further review, I think we've determined that Helen is a super pastel butter leopard. But again, I don't know. I've been told that the that snakes with no eyes oftentimes come out with uh, screwed up patterns or different colors and that. And obviously in the case of Helen, all of her color is gone. So the pattern is there, and I've seen some that, that Justin made uh, years ago that would kind of lend itself to this, pair, uh, this uh, set of jeans. But yeah, she's just bizarre, man. Super cool, obviously really responsive, very timid because she can't see. Um, very responsive. Unfortunately, has not taken uh, prey on her own yet. So she doesn't hunt it. She doesn't seek it out and strike and, and coil. Um, she takes very easily to assist feeding frozen thawed. So that's good. And obviously she's doing really well. She's healthy and growing in that. Um, so I do, I, I assist feed her. I give her a chance obviously to, to take uh, on her own, but I'd rather get her something than nothing. So this is Helen, probably the coolest snake that we've ever made. Next up on our holdbacks, this little dude is eating like a champ. Um, we missed on a female, but we are gonna repeat the pairing this year and hopefully make some girls that we can keep. But that is our scaleless head hide. Really, really cool looking animal here. Nice high expression scaleless head. Beautiful pattern distribution. I love pides in general, um, but this is about as good as it gets in pattern and white distribution. And obviously the scaleless head working in weird ways has got this funky two-tone, two different colors in the saddles here. You know, it just, scaleless head does some really bizarre stuff, even if you're not trying to breed for the full scaleless. I mean, using scaleless head as a enhancing gene is, is awesome. But this dude's eating great, growing well. I'm excited to get him up to size and put him into some other project ideas I have. So as many of you know, we produced and sold a female GHI clown this year, and I really kind of regret doing it. Um, I'm happy where she's at, but man, did she look cool. But I had to keep something from that clutch, and this Mojave clown female is just awesome. And she obviously is eating like a, like a truck too. Eating like a truck. Yeah, good one. Uh, she's eating incredibly well. She'll eat, you know, anything I put in front of her face. Um, and she just looks awesome. I love how bright white the sides are, how far up they come up into here. I'd almost like to see this with calico, see how much more it emphasizes that. But, and she's got that really cool dot on her head. The other one did not have this head pattern, so that was kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, just really pretty girl. Excited to have another visual clown growing up. Obviously, cannot have enough of these. 
and uh, you know we'll make some GHI and Mojave clones hopefully this season. If not, we've got better building blocks here and even further beyond that. This girl we had to keep just because I love this project and of the three that we made, I liked her overall pattern and that the best. She is starting to go into shed so she's not quite as bright and that's the cinnamon pinstripe ultramel female. I love the ultramel stuff. Uh, we're unfortunately not going to be making any visual ultramels this, this season. We're working on a longer term project with that. Uh, I'll announce more about that later as the clutches come in, but we'll be, we'll be back to making more visuals soon and with more combos. But this combination of the cinnamon and the pinstripe just works so well together because it gives you those really nice bright orange sides, that purple uh, kind of saddling outline, and then that almost bone white kind of creamy colored dorsal just works great together. And the reason we kept this girl over the others is as you get farther down the tail pattern, you see it becomes very, very reduced, almost almost no patterning in here at all. And I just really liked that look. I like the reduction and I kind of want to see if that's something I can carry through as like a line bread trait in even more reduced pattern. Doesn't have a bunch of these, you know, drips and raindrops and that uh, coming down the side. But I, either way, this girl's eating fantastic, growing well. And I'm really excited to have another female Ultramel to grow up in the collection. Cinnamon Pinstripe Ultramel. All right, this next one is, it is in my holdback rack, but I do have it also on the website uh, available. I just, it's one of those things where if he sells, he sells. If not, I'm certainly not gonna be upset. And that's the Lavender Albino 100% Hep Pied male that we made this year. We missed on the dream sickle. Um, our odds obviously are a lot better this year now that we're using a, a visual dream sickle from Chris at the Reptile Ward. But just in case, I did I actually saved this back before that uh, that deal with Chris was complete, just in case. So he is in the holdback rack, but again, you know, he is available if somebody does want him. Super cool. I mean, first lavender we've ever made. I love the coloring and in, in the couple of sheds he's had already and he's eaten really well too, the whites are definitely starting to disappear and become much more gray tone to lavender. He's got these really cool like hook pattern things and this nice, uh, what I call like fairy dust sparkling in that around the outside of the alien head. So really nice male. You know, if you are interested in him, let me know. But for now, he's sitting in the holdback rack. Along the same lines of that project, the only female we hit in that entire clutch, oddly enough, we went ahead and held back just because this is probably the coolest looking pastel pied I have ever seen. I might be a little biased, but this girl is a pastel pied, 66% possible het lavender. And, you know, if the color and the tone and these bright orange highlights and this kind of almost paradoxing thing in the middle. And just, I, if any of this is to go on, I'm gonna bet she's gonna prove. But either way, if nothing else, I've got another female pie to him growing up. Can never have enough of those, just like clowns. This one is stunning. This is just a fantastic looking animal. I love the super low white, but a full wrap uh, ringer, so to speak. Um, and great, just great color distribution on her. She is dulling a little bit as she uh, as she ages, but still really cool looking, really kind of sooty. So pastel pied, possible head lavender female. All right, this next male here that we've got, I realized after this clutch came out that I don't have any visual hypo males of any kind. So I really liked the way this guy looked and I liked what I could do with the further down in some other projects and that is the Hypo Mojave male. Just Hypo in my opinion is probably uh, one of the most underrated genes right now. It's an older gene obviously it's been around a long time but everybody is so you know doing desert ghost and sunset and you know clown and monsoon and stuff like that and I still think Hypo is is one of the key recessives to have 
and I just really like what it does and this Hypo Mojave is no exception. So gonna grow him up, be able to put him into some double recessive stuff um, and obviously increase the odds of making, you know, proving some girls out or making uh, all visuals in a clutch or whatever. So really excited to have this one, the Hypo Mojave male. And last but certainly not least, for the first half of our holdbacks, I wholeheartedly believe that this is my favorite animal that we produced this year. It's in that same thing with the hypo, and that is the yellow belly mimosa female. This girl is, is just insane. Um, I, I, just, I can't get over the color. Like, I don't even think the camera does this any justice, but this is like a blue, kind of a bluish gray, kind of steel look all the way through. Has that bright orange head with the gray head stamp. And then it fades out into this nice bright orange tail. Really cool ringer, which is very common in champagne, especially champagne and yellow belly. Uh, but the hypo here is just, it's turned the whole thing kind of this bluish gray that looks incredible. And I, champagne's another gene that I think is underutilized. Uh, you're starting to see it come back in clown. I think that's a good way to go with this, you know, hypo champagne clowns, um, you know, hypo champagne freeways, that kind of thing. So either way, having a visual uh, yellow belly mimosa female in the clutch is just going to be awesome. I, I absolutely love this girl. She's eating very well and growing quick. All right, guys, what do you think? I hope you enjoyed. Uh, really cool stuff so far. The the first handful of holdbacks I'm really, really happy with. Uh, just, you know, really nice stuff in all honesty. Like I said before, that Lavender Head Pied male is technically for sale, but uh, he is in the holdback rack, but who knows? Um, if you need him, let me know. We'll work something out. But aside from that, that's going to do it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. Again, like I said, next week is going to be an, an addition, an update to this room. So we'll get to that. This weekend, this coming Saturday, for the live stream, 6 p.m. West, 9 p.m. East, on uh, Saturday night, is going to be Kendra and Jeff. Kendra Westy and Jeff Obes from uh, Puget Sound Pythons. So really excited to have them on. They're kind of... They're, they're very quiet uh under i will say underground but definitely quiet behind the scenes not you know not out there in front of everybody but they got a really cool uh mix of a collection not just ball python so we'll get them on we'll talk to them about that so make sure you're subscribed set your reminder for the live stream this saturday next week we're going to have the update video or uh, upgrade video in here then we'll get back to round two of the holdbacks until then i'll see you guys in the next one see ya